Hi, this is City Hospital. Your daughter was just brought in as an emergency. I was enjoying my day off at home with my husband when we got that shocking call from the hospital. They told us our daughter had been admitted because of a heat stroke. What? We're on our way. After I hang up, I filled my husband in on what had happened, and he was equally stunned. We didn't hesitate and immediately drove to the hospital. When we got there, a nurse greeted us. She didn't have any ID on her. Hang on, how'd you guys get our number then? You know one of those emergency tags? She had a keychain with your info on it, so we dialed that number. This threw me for a loop. I didn't remember ever giving our daughter something like that. The nurse reassured us. She's doing much better now. But when the nurse led us into the patient's room, I saw a girl I didn't know. Hold on, who is she? Right after I asked, the girl in bed lit up and shouted, Dad! Who would have guessed what craziness would come next? My name's Lucy. I'm a 36-year-old working mom. I married Dan seven years ago after we were set up by a friend. We made it official after dating for two years. I've been with a big publishing firm since I graduated, while he's got a job at a smaller place. Aside from the fact that my paycheck's a bit bigger, we're just your average couple. A year into our marriage, I learned I was expecting. The morning sickness was brutal, making me feel nauseous and dizzy, so I had to rest a lot. What really surprised me was that my husband barely pitched in around the house. Nowadays, if a wife's feeling under the weather, the husband would usually step up, right? But he never cooked, cleaned, or did laundry. Could you help with the laundry? I'm feeling super sick. I asked him once, but he just grumbled. Why should I have to do that? Seriously? I'm carrying our child. Can't you chip in? No, it's not a big deal. Being pregnant is being sick. You do it. He ate quickly and crashed, leaving everything to me. Another time, after I'd been doing all the chores feeling like crap, he staggered and drunk and tried to get close. Lucy, how about some fun tonight? I shot him down fast, reminding him how I was feeling. No! What if something happens to the baby? Besides, I'm not in the mood at all. He shot back. Turning down your own husband? If something happens, don't blame me. Before stumbling to bed. There I was, alone again. Fast forward, and I gave birth to our baby. Both our families, who lived close, were over the moon about their new grandchild. Even my usually reserved father-in-law Paul was beaming. It made me feel like a million bucks. But boy, was raising our baby a challenge. Dan started traveling more for work and was rarely home, leaving everything on my plate. It was tough, but who else was going to step up? Mostly, it was just me taking care of our girl, though my parents did lend a hand now and then. Dan, he just chilled when he was home. At first, I was pretty upset about it. But eventually, I just rolled with it. Our little girl, Laura, grew up healthy and is now an eight-year-old in second grade. She's a gem, always telling me, I love you, Mom, and pitching in around the house. One afternoon, she got home from school and showed me a note about a classroom visit. Mom, they said it would be great if Dad could come this time. Oh... Like a dad's day? We'll check with him when he's back. We both waited for Dan to come home. When he walked in, Laura gave him the note, asking with hope in her eyes. Dad, 
Can you come to my class? Why can't your mom go? Please, Dad. I really want you there. Okay. I'll work it out. Laura jumped up, beaming from ear to ear. He's always swamped with work, so her dad attending her school's open house must have meant the world to her. She was so pumped about prepping for the event, wanting to show her dad her best. Her excitement was really sweet. But on the evening of the event, Laura got home, sobbing. What's going on? Dad never showed up to my class. Oh, hold on. Are you kidding me? From what Laura shared, he was a no-show, making her the only kid without a parent there. I tried calling him right away. No answer. He finally staggered in late that night, reeking of alcohol. Hey, why'd you bail on Laura's open house? What? Oh, was that today? It must have slipped my mind. Seriously? She was so excited. You let her down big time. Jeez, quit nagging. It's not the end of the world. Something was off. He smelled like a different body wash. Not ours. Did you shower somewhere else? He looked taken aback for a second. I hit up a sauna. Seriously? If you had time for a sauna, you could have been there for Laura. Drop it. I'm heading to bed. Enough already. He stormed off to our room. From then on, I had this nagging feeling he was keeping secrets. We needed to hash things out. I asked him to be around the next Sunday. Laura was set to join a day camp with her friend's family, so we'd have the place to ourselves. Dan rolled out of the bed late, looking all cranky, but I reminded him we needed to chat. As he begrudgingly sat down, he asked, So, what's up? Well, but just as I was gearing up to dive in, our landline buzzed. Talk about timing. I answered. Hello? City Hospital here. Your daughter was just brought in as an emergency. Say what? Apparently, a good Samaritan found her passed out on a sidewalk and dialed 911. The hospital thought it was a heat stroke and were running some tests. Oh no! I'll be right there! That's the city hospital, correct? After filling in Dan, we both, in complete shock, sped over to the hospital. What the heck happened at camp? Is she alright? My head was spinning with questions as I drove. When we got there, a nurse approached. You're Laura's parents, right? She didn't have any ID on her. Hang on. How'd you guys get our number then? You know one of those emergency tags. She had a keychain with your info on it, so we dialed that number. That threw me for a loop. I never gave Laura any ID like that. How'd the hospital get our number then? Someone else must have given it to her. This is her room. She's doing okay now. The nurse led us to a room, but inside was a girl I'd never seen. Hold on, who is she? As I was trying to figure it out, the girl in bed chirped up. Dad, you're here! Excuse me? She was definitely calling Dan Dad. I glanced at him, and he was white as a sheet, lost for words. Hold on, why is she calling you Dad? Dad, who's she? Isn't Mom coming? I'm starving. I turned to the stunned Dan, shaking him. Okay, what's going on here? Well, this is, um... He struggles to find the right words. Getting closer to the bed, I spotted a kid's bag with a keychain hanging from it. This keychain had two 
handwritten phone numbers. Our home number was one of them. The other was a cell number I didn't recognize. But that handwriting was all too familiar. It was definitely Jan's. The little girl, looking up at me, with those big eyes, had an uncanny resemblance to him. The truth started to sink in. This girl was his secret daughter. He had carelessly scribbled our home number on her ID keychain. What a dumb move. I was beyond mad. A mix of shock and simmering anger. Given we were in a hospital, I kept my voice low and hissed at him. Don't even think about bolting. We're hashing this out now. I quickly made a call. About a half hour later, there's Dan, looking spaced out, seated in the hospital waiting area. As I sat beside him, the folks I'd called up strolled in. Lucy, what's the deal? My in-laws hurried over. Seeing his dad, Dan looked like he'd seen a ghost. Thanks for coming, Paul and Susan. Your granddaughter was admitted here in an emergency. Is Laura all right? Did something happen to her? Susan's worry was palpable, and I just shook my head. No, it's not about Laura. Come again? Without a word, I just gestured towards the hospital room, and they took a peek, then returned. Lucy? Who's that little girl? Susan's face went white, and beside her, Paul looked baffled. That's Dan's secret kid. His what? The look they shared was pure shock. Susan edged closer to Dan. Please, tell me you didn't. Then I saw another woman, eyes wide as saucers. Dan? Molly? What's going on here? I had posed as a hospital worker and called the other cell number on the ID tag bringing her here. I greeted her with a smile. Nice to meet you. Mind taking a seat? We should probably chat. In a quiet corner of the waiting area, Dan and this unknown woman sat down, with me and my in-laws in front of them. All right, Molly's mom, can you start by telling us who you are? She answered, sounding kind of distant. My name's Taylor. Okay, Taylor. What exactly is your relationship with my husband? Um, well... She hesitated, and when she went quiet, I shifted my gaze to Dan. So Dan? Spill. What's your deal with Taylor and the kid in that room? He just shook, looking at me, lost for words. Right as I was going to push for more, my father-in-law's voice cut through. Out with it. Dan just broke. Barely above a whisper, he confessed. Taylor and I, we had an affair. Molly's my daughter. I kept a straight face. But Susan started sobbing, and Paul just dropped his gaze, heartbroken. So what's the full story here? Break it down for me. He sighed. Okay, here's the thing. He began to share, albeit hesitantly. When I was pregnant, I dealt with morning sickness and wasn't up for getting close, which really bugged him. Around then, he started seeing his co-worker, Taylor, who went after him. The affair went on, and when our daughter, Laura, turned to, news broke that Taylor was expecting. She decided to keep the baby, and he went along. He'd head over to her place after work, even making up business trips to spend the night. You've been deceiving me all this time? My voice was soft, but my disbelief was clear. And he had the nerve to snap at me. This is mostly on you for not being there for me when you were pregnant. Excuse me? Do you hear yourself? I didn't do anything wrong. Things just happened. Dan mumbled. Right then, Paul, who'd been beside us, got up and shoved him. Cut 
the nonsense. Whoa, Dad. It's clear you're the one at fault. Apologize to Lucy. Oh, uh, look. Taylor, who'd been quiet till then, finally opened her mouth. Dan and I are in love. Molly's the fruit of that love. Dan, leave Lucy and let's be a real family. He paused, then replied. Wait, I'm not thinking of divorcing. What's that supposed to mean? You can't hold down a job and aren't great around the house either. Really? That's what you think of me? Taylor, in a fit of rage, grabbed and shook him. Everyone, including my in-laws and me, just stared, stunned. But I jumped in when I saw others gawking. Enough. Look, Lucy, I'm really sorry for the affair. But my heart's with you and Laura. He reached out, but I pulled away sharply. Are you serious? Divorce is happening. Taylor's face brightened, contrasting his stunned look. There you go, Tan. She's saying divorce. Let's be a true family. Taylor, you can have this jerk, but you owe me first. She looked taken aback. I let out a sigh. <sighs> you thought you could mess around with a married man, have a kid, and everything would be peachy? I'll get my $65,000 lawsuit if necessary. I can't cough that up. You're so cold. I brushed off her comment and addressed Dan. And you, Dan, you're on the hook too. I want child support and alimony. He looked completely beaten down as Paul hit his head. I walked out on them. With my in-laws backing me, the divorce was quick. They reached out to Taylor's folks, filling them in. They were angry with Taylor and ended up covering for her since she was broke. They vowed to take Taylor and Molly back to their small town. That was the end for Dan and Taylor. He handed over most of his savings to me. With child support for Laura and now Molly, he's tied on money. But Paul swore to make sure he pays his due. Hopefully, he'll think hard about his choices and step up. As for me, I use that money to relocate and give Laura and me a fresh start. I had my concerns, but she comforted me, saying, With you by my side, Mom, I'm good. Now, I'm focused on her joy and our bright path ahead.